A little bonus tip, this is not as much to follow along as just to show you. Here's another panorama that I have. What happens if you have two different um, versions of something in the file? There was a car moving, a bicycle went across, something's going on. In this case, a slight shift uh, uh, to this person who was standing up on this arch. I don't want to use this one. I like this one. I like the casualness of the pose. If you know that you don't want to, um, you only want one image out of your panorama, one image has to take priority. You don't want it to possibly use another one, or maybe they're so close to each other you're getting kind of a ghosted one where it's trying to use both images. What you can do there is take your three images and we're going to manually remove a portion of it. So there's no chance of it using a particular image, a particular portion of an image. So now we're going to manually stitch these together in a panorama. I don't want to go right to photo merge right now because I'm going to do a little, uh, almost a retouch. You'll see it's actually a removal. But this would be if you have a panorama where you want to manually stitch them together because you want to retouch them first you want to align them, you want to do something else to get them just right. And in that case, I'd recommend that you take your three files and bring them into Photoshop and do the auto-align, auto-blend. I'll give you another little tip related to that that is a, a nice one. We'll use this in our next little portion of this demonstration. And that's that there's a little script coming from Russell Brown. Russell Brown, the maniacal genius at Adobe, the creative director, one of the founders of Adobe. And that's a free script that you can find at his website, russellbrown.com, two S's and two L's. russellbrown.com, and you can find Dr. Brown's services. What flavor is up there is depending upon when you go there. But Dr. Brown's services is a great set of little tools. They're free. They were uh, programmed by Adobe. And uh, again, an easy place to get them is russellbrown.com. But I'm going to come over here to Mergermatic, and it simply is going to take any number of files and put them all into one layered Photoshop document. You have Placematic, another great thing. This will automatically bring the images in as smart objects, a great way of bringing images in as smart objects within Photoshop quickly and easily. The one thing, smart objects uh, cannot take advantage of Auto Align, Auto Blend. Because remember, a smart object looks back to its original. You're going to do this uh, distortion, and it doesn't like doing that. It's not an option with smart objects, this auto-align, auto-blend. So that, in that case, we're going to use Dr. Brown's Mergermatic to manually combine images into a panorama. And by doing that, it's automatically going to bring them all into one document, and I'm done. Okay. Now that they're here, I can automatically align these if I want. But in this case, the tip that I want to give you is that if I know I don't want to use this figure in uh, these um, this panorama that I'm creating, you can simply come up here. Of course, this opened all the originals in this into a brand new document, so there's no way of destroying your originals. That's the nice thing also about the uh, Merge-O-Matic. I can simply come up here. I'm going to double click on the background so it supports transparency. As you know, the one layer in Photoshop that does not support transparency is that background layer. We already mentioned that. I'm just going to simply come up here and hit delete. And that way there's no chance that that figure, no matter what I do, can be used when I combine the images into a panorama. Something as simple as that. You've got a car that went across. You don't want to use one car. Just go in and delete that little option. Now I'm going to shift click, have all my three layers uh, active, and now I'm going to manually photo merge them together, so to speak, by going into image, uh, edit, excuse me, edit, auto align layers. See that dot, dot, dot? That means it's going to ask my opinion. We've got our same options here, okay, except for the interactive because that it knows that you're in Photoshop so that you can do it there. We'll use that same cylindrical. We'll say OK. It's now going to first align those images. And you can see that what it did, did a great job of aligning them, but it's going to have to do some work on the color to get these to match. And now we're going to go edit auto blend layers. Auto blend one, two, three. And there is our image, mind bogglingly cool. And again, there is that um, alignment and the matching of the color. And there was no chance that it was going to end up using this little portion of the image over here. Okay. 
So if there's n you want no chance of it accidentally using one image, just go in there, delete. If you want to do it manually because you want to retouch first or align horizons or something else, remember that you can select all the images and then edit auto align and auto blend. Okay. With that going there, and of course what it's doing there is it's doing what we've taught for years how to do a good panorama, is it's doing a difference. It's finding exactly where those pixels match as close as is humanly or computerly possible. And uh, that's why it's such an irregular edge, is because it is actually analyzing every single pixel in your file and then coming up here and m blending those together. First doing the distortion to make those pixels align as good as possible and then blending them. Mind-bogglingly cool. Next, we're going to use the same kind of manual technique to combine images not for panoramas but for other purposes. Here we are back in the bridge, and before we move on, I just wanted to show you that those three images, if we hit auto, would have done this, where we gave it the ability to change perspective. You can see how much it distorted the left-hand side here, again, which may be something that is, is fine with you for what you're going for. It is an option. Um, here it is cylindrical, and here it is with position only. And again, this in this case, the position only I'm not crazy about, because if you'll notice, you can kind of see where the seam would be. That's why the arch comes up here and then changes its angle, because all it could do is change the orientation. It couldn't compensate and create a nice smooth arch, which is what's really there. There's a nice smooth arch. It doesn't come down like this. <clears throat> so, auto, cylindrical, and reposition only use them any way that you'd like. Okay.